What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Armchair GM Sports Network and welcome back to the NHL 21 GM Mode Commentary Series with your Seattle Kraken. And we're here to begin the 2021-2022 uh, season. If you missed any of the other videos, they're live on the channel right now. Go check them out. Hit the like button. Leave me your comments down below. And thank you, as always, to everyone who tunes in to these uh, series each and every single time they're uploaded. You guys are what keeps me going here, and uh, we're going to keep going here with the Seattle Kraken. And if you've seen the last video, I had a lot of trouble with trying to adjust the lines, trying to find the right uh, scheme of things. So what I did was, uh, in between the last video and this video, I kind of went into this myself and kind of tweaked a lot of things and um set it to the way i want to set this team and going and, and go forward with it so i've adjusted the lines i've done gone through every line through the nhl ahl i've assigned the scouts i've put some players on the watch list that we might need to watch for our top six which i'll get into in a second here but i think the first thing we have to do and i don't think i remember if we've done it yet but i'm going to pull it up here is decide on the captain and right now, I think we have Strom as assistant. Yeah, Sergeyev assistant and Shea assistant. I think it's deserving now, just based off of the last couple of episodes here. Uh, I think Mikhail Sergeyev deserves the, the C. And we have him for a long time, signing a really good deal. And he's going to be the backbone of this team. So I think it's uh, fitting that we assign the captain, the first captain in franchise history, Mikhail Sergeyev, with Shea as the assistant as well with Ryan Strom. We could move on the A's around uh, as time goes by, but for sure, we're going to stick with uh, Sergeyev as our new captain of the team. Uh, now, as for the lines, let's go into uh, edit lines. I'll show you guys what I've done. And we have at least a plus three for the top six. And this is what I want to go with. Greenway, Strom, and Guryanov on line one. I know Guryanov works... Uh, uh, more well <laughs> well on line two but uh i think he could definitely flourish from line three we also got to remember two we're going to be changing the coach next year so this is just for the time being i want to go with this for sure as my as our top six i'd like for krebs to grow i know krebs we kind of missed on him uh but maybe with the new coach we can definitely get a hit on him but i put him with studnika and donskoy on that third line but perlene hosting i want to keep i want to i i think we'll be able to sign these guys long term they don't want extensions but uh, if we sign them long term for uh, they're really cheap, I'll show you guys in a second. I think we can definitely uh, have these guys for the future and be our uh, for sure second line because they all work here on the second line. Um, and Ryan Strom, I know he works uh, uh, well on the second line as well. But if I switch Strom and Rasmussen around, we're only getting a plus one on that uh, that first line. I really want to maximize it for the time being. And again, if we get a new coach, maybe Strom does work better on the first line. But Obviously, he's going to be our number one center going forward as well. So uh, that's our top six. As for the fourth line here, you're going to see a negative one. That's because we are not done completing the fourth line here. And that's because we have to get rid of JVR. He doesn't really fit anywhere on the team. I want our rookies and our young players to uh, grow and, and get maximized in our top six. And our top six is established. So he's really just out of place on this team. Um, we can always move them up here in the fourth line and we get no chemistry there, but I at least want a, uh, some sort of chemistry going on that third line. So we're going to move on from JVR and I already have a trade in mind. I, f I found a fourth liner that could fit into that slot where he is. Uh, defense. We're still going to stick with Dermot, Shea, uh, Sergachev. Then we're going to put Johansson up into the top four. I did have it like this, but uh, because we didn't hit as well on Petrie, I mean, he does fit better on the second pairing. I uh, kind of want Johansson to grow a little bit. Honka is in the perfect place with uh, being 25. He might get up to an 82, and that'll be the, you know his max, and, and that's fine. Uh, but Johansson, 23 years old at 79. I mean, he works better on line one. I mean, but Dermot, I kind of want to see what we got in him for one more year. If he doesn't fit, then I can always put Johansson in Dermot spot, and Petrie can switch with Honka, and then our top four would be Johansson, Honka, Sergachev, and Shea, which I'm leaning more towards the, the future. Um, so for now, I'm going to keep Johansson here just so we can get a little bit of growth out of him, and then at least Honka will have a plus one chemistry and play with an 83 or 84 overall in this case with Petrie, so at least have someone good to play with alongside of. Um, I've gotten the power play lines to plus three for both. These are the power play lines. Uh, just so you guys can take a look at them. And then I've made sure there is no negatives in the penalty kill, uh, which does hurt you in the simulation I found. And then goalies, obviously, we're sticking with uh, UC Saros and Samuel Montenball 
We also have to keep a look out on Gustafson, who is a young goalie growing, already reaching the 80 overall mark and is a medium starter potential. Um, as Montembal is a 24 year old, but is only a medium French starter. So, I mean, it looks like Gustafson's going to be the back of the future, could even potentially steal starter eventually as well if he grows properly. And then, whilst we have Goatsy down there, our uh, one draft pick. Other than that, there's the AHL lineups. Just so you guys can take a look. And as for the uh, NH or AHL defense, uh, we got Capio Capo Bianco, who's a, a 78 at 24. Could be a late bloomer. I'm going to have him with a plus three chemistry for this AHL. Maybe he grows and could probably fit into our bottom pair next year. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Jeremy Waugh got a little bit of a growth too, so I stuck him there. And he's a medium top four, so he can actually grow into a, a probably a, a good defenseman for us as well. Other than that, uh, I mean, Sarar. So Yarvi, I don't know how to say that. He's also a young defenseman. He's got the low top four potential. Could grow. He's got a plus one playing with a 78, which is fine. So uh, other than that, that is our lineup for the time being. So we are going to first get rid of JVR. And I know it's in within a division, but we're, uh, I did find a perfect trade uh, for him. Um, and it is JVR for Matthew Phillip, who is a center right winger. But fits on our fourth line, I believe. No, he doesn't. Okay, so he didn't fit the scouting assessment, but he is a fourth line role. And you know what? Our fourth line, we're not looking to grow. This is just a perfect fit for him. Um, let's just start. Sorry, per perfect fit for us. God, English. Uh, <laughs> so what we can do is get a little bit more out of the Calgary Flames because we're giving them a player like JVR who... I believe still has some trade value. Yeah, has some trade value here. So we can probably get a draft pick. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they have any rookie skaters we could probably try to get. Yeah, I mean, they all have pretty good trade value. Don't think we're going to be able to get any of these guys. I'd probably go for like a, a this guy, Zeri. A high top nine, Connor Zeri. I think he's a two-way. Uh, they got a low top six here in this guy, but he's already 21. I believe we drafted this guy in the last one. Ryan Francis? Yeah, we did. <laughs> uh, I'm willing to go for one of these 18-year-olds like Backman or Emmerich. Two-way, two-way. Yeah, they're all two-ways. Backman. Sniper. Center sniper. Okay, I like that. If we added him in there, what's the trade value look like? Okay, it's a little bit higher. And, oh, the salary cap issue here. Oh, okay. So, we might have to take a player back with some cap. So it's organized by salary. What do we got? I mean, we could take Luci Milan Lucic. You could put him in the AHL. Oh, God. Two years, though? No, not two years. Uh, someone with a year left. With some cap here, like Athens CU or Arakawa, maybe Athens CU. I think they want. Did they want to get rid of him? No, it's Arakawa. Um, what about Athens CU? We don't have any scouting assessment on these guys. Oh, it's gonna take one of them though. So Arakawa. Maybe, maybe we can just flip Howla. Still be over the salary cap. Oof. We might have to take both. We might have to take both. And Athens see you. And we'd be okay, so we have to give him someone back that has no cap. So that's fine. What do they want? They want this Robert. No, we have to get someone on the roster. Um this Gagne guy, I don't think he's in, in the lineup. Me, this Gagne guy. There we go. So I think that would work. So James Van Riemsdyk and Gagne would get Eric Howla, Athens CU, and Matthew Phillip. It could basically be our freaking fourth line if we wanted to, but I think we're going to flip uh, at least Howla or Athens CU back to someone else. So let's just propose trade. And we are good to go there. So we can accept that. Go to roster moves and throw in uh, Matthew Phillip. Let's just make sure no one's into the AHL. Um, no, we're good. So let's go to edit lines. Okay. 
So we are missing someone. Did we send uh, sent Maji Apani down? Okay. Uh, let's just put Athanasiu in here. Uh, he actually fits there uh, pretty well on the fourth line, so he could actually be a good fit for us there. Um, and as for the wing spot, let's just throw Eric Halla in for the time being. Might not have needed Matthew Phillip. Move him there and Halla into the center. This could be our fourth line right here. It's pretty <laughs> hefty fourth line. Um, wow. Halla's one that doesn't really fit well. What if we threw instead of a howler, let's uh, throw Phillips in there. Does that make a difference? No, it's still, uh, yeah. Um, you know what? Might as well use Howla since he's here. We'll have Howla, Anthony, see you, and Donato. We'll have a pretty <laughs> solidly built team here. Uh, extra. So what's uh, what got affected? The three on three line. So let's put. Uh, okay, because JVR was there. So let's put someone with a good shoot. Shooting category. Ariana's up there. Hosang is already there. Arakala. He's got a pretty good shooting category. Let's put Arakala in there. So we'll have. Uh, oh no, Hosang isn't in here. Okay, so never mind. Let me put uh, Josh Hosang in there because he had at least four stars. This could help him grow as well. There we go. All right. Um, I think we're done. I know this is a pretty. A <laughs> Pretty like hardcore fourth li fourth line here. Um, god, they both work well on other lines. Like I could always. Oh god, Athanasiu could maximize the hell out of that. But we're trying to maximize the hell out of Josh Hosang, who again works only on the second line. Same with Perlini. Yeah, I can't move him up there. Um, yeah, we're gonna keep him there. Yeah, Sunika. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep these lines like this. Yeah, we're good. We're good. All right, no more uh, no more tinkering. Uh, what we do need to do, though, is sign a Hosang and uh, Perlini before they want more money. So where are they? So Perlini, I know it doesn't want an extension, but if we go to eight years... Only two million dollars. We do eight years at three million per. Might be able to get him that. So let's offer that to Perlini and Josh Hosang. Let's offer him an eight-year deal at. So he's asking for three. Probably can get him at three point. Maybe, eh, probably up to three point nine for eight years. Let's try that. So we'll give those contracts to them. Uh, Stanika wants a contract offer. I'd love to keep him. Oh my god, eight years at... Can we get him at like 1.5 for eight years? That would be a steal. Greenway wants an extension. Get him at... And he wants to stay. So we get him at 3 million for eight years. So let's offer that to him. Donato, we're not going to worry about. Hala, no. Athens, you, no. So... Matthew Phillips, we're not going to worry about either. So just those guys for the forwards. D, is there anybody? Petrie, no. Honka, no. But Johansson. Can't sign Johansson or Honka. That's right. We only sign them to one-year deals. We'll have to worry about them next year. Um, okay. All right. So I think we're set for that. We'll see if they get those contract extensions done. We'll get some simming done here. Um, so let's just sim ahead a couple of days. See what happens. So we got Stadnika in, locked in for eight years. That's good. That's good to see. Um, Greenway signed for eight years. Hosang signed for eight years. And Perlini signed for eight years. All right, boys. There are some steals right there. Let's go. Because if those guys grow, we're going to have some really good contracts on this team. And just to show you guys what I mean. Um, Greenway, two point... Or, or is getting at two point for this year. But he's got three million. If he grows into something... Like, say he gets to, like, an 85 overall, he's only going to be making $3 million for the next eight years, which is fantastic. Same with Perlini, $3 million for the next eight years, which gets him to at least 33 years old, which is fine. Movable contract as well. Hosang, the same thing. Gets him to at least 33, and it's also a movable contract at 3.9. If uh, So we just need to make sure we do grow him. Um... What was the other one? Stun I think it was a really cheap deal too. Yeah, eight years. Gets him at, at least to 30 years old at $1.5 million, which is fantastic. 
because uh, if he grows into something, man, like even like a third line center or, or a second line center, that is perfect. So now I think we can get into some simulating. Yeah, let's just uh, sim to the beginning of the regular season here. Do, 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 do. I hope the next gen game, again, I think I've said this a lot throughout these videos, but I, th I hope the next gen game um, does have a faster simulation. That would be like lightning quick, like you're about to see when I do <laughs> put that goofy music on. Um, I hope it gets that fast at some point. That would be sweet. Um, videos will be a lot shorter too. Be, I can pump out way more videos. Um, yeah, so I will uh, sim, I guess, to the deadline, I guess. Yeah, we'll do the deadline. Um, and then we'll see where we're at the deadline, if we need to make any moves and what we need to do with this team. So um, let me just sim up to the trade deadline, guys. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back, and uh, not a bad season at all. 38, 20, and 4 up to the deadline. So let's take a look at how we are doing team-wise. Uh, second in the division, which is great. We are ahead by a lot compared to the Sharks in third place and only four points out of first. So a very successful season so far. Now let's take a look at the team stats. Ryan Strom leading the way with 48 points. So let's take, sort by forwards first. Brandon Perlini, 21 goals, and Guriana, 21 goals. Looks like they are leading the team there, but uh, 42 points there. Hosang with 42 points. Uh, no growth out of them, though. Uh, that's interesting. So Guriana with 33 points. Danica with 33 points. like to see that in the third line. Okay. Okay, so Krebs actually went up to an 82. So that's actually a really good sign. Um, other than that... No one else we need to look at for growth. Defenseman, Brady Shea leading the way with 48 points. That is huge for uh, Brady Shea. And getting up to the 27-year-old mark, so he's going to max out at 86. Could go up to a couple more overalls depending on performance, but uh, that's good to see. Sergachev staying at 88, but with 32 points. Dermot with 27 points. No growth out of him. Honko at 19. Uh, Petrie 13. Johansson, no growth out of him, but only 10 points. Uh, Goalie-wise, Uzi Saros, very good year. 921 save percentage. Look at that, boys. That is fantastic. 238 goals against average. Montebal, all right, with some uh, all right stats in the, as a backup goalie. Um, I think we should take a look at HL. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Brain fart there. Um, any growth down there? I guess we can just take a look at... Uh, uh, the progress reports for some growth so let's just take a look at the stats for now uh oh wow jeremy Wa uh, leading the way down there with goalies our goalies uh defensemen um as for our goalie gustison 20 and 19 not a good year in the ahl still sticking at an 80 um yeah no growth that's okay I think we're still having a pretty solid year team-wise. I mean, 38, 20, and 4 is nothing to uh, scream about, but is a solid year in terms of where we are in division. So um, I think right now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the players I've put in the um, watch list and see what our scouts have found with them and see if anyone does fit in our top six that we could potentially go after. So I did a lot. I did snipers and, and power forwards. So we will go uh, through the list here. Uh, Tolvanen is the one. Fits on line four, so we can get rid of him. So it would be unpin. Nolan Patrick. Bottom six. All right, we can take the pin out of him. This is what happens, though. That's why we have scouts. Cousins, top six. All right, so Cousins is a power forward that uh, we can potentially probably go after if he's uh, uh, out there or, you know, maybe just think about going after uh, Wallstrom, forward line two, that's pretty good. Although I do like Perlini and, um, he could be the centerman. Ooh, actually, 
No, he's a sniper. He'd have to be the replacement for Perlini, I think. So Sanford, no. It's a good thing we didn't sign him. Uh, Krebs is already on our team. I forgot to take him off. Uh, Buknevich. Forward line two. Um, we're going to unpin him. Poyarvi. Sniper. Forward line two. I'm going to keep him there. Um, and Jacob Vrana. Forward line two. So a lot of snipers and one power forward. Um, so that's interesting. So Cousins is the only one that fits, could fit on line one. If we're looking at tweaking line one. Um, I don't know. Cousins for Greenway would be pretty sweet if we could pull that off. But... Uh, Okay, so the watch list didn't really, didn't really get anything out of it. So I don't think we need to really tackle it, especially about how our team's performance is doing. So let's just go into trade deadline day. And we are going to be a conservative buyer, I think, going into trade deadline day. So let's enter trade deadline day and just see what's out there. Um, and the first, first player is going to be able to Tuka Rask. Yeah, way too old, 34 years old. Not even going to make an attempt at him. Johnny Goudreau would be sweet. Uh, can we look at his player profile we cannot or do I have to hit a on him what that what happens there so then it brings me to this screen okay um fits in bottom six so no nothing for a Goudreau Suter Holtby Flurry yeah no no one's really sticking out to me and uh, we have a trade alert so someone's been traded Boston trades a first a third and someone else to wow the St. Louis for Pareko Okay, um, yeah, no one here really that the any out of the top 10 players here wrist the line would be sweet um, Let's take a look at wrist the line nor is he fit in the team No, yeah, I really want to grow Lucas Johansson I really don't want to I'm not really looking to acquire anybody Huge here at the deadline because we want to grow our team. We have another trade alert Blue Jackets trade uh, a first for Giordano and James Van Rieslijk. James Van Rieslijk's been moved twice <laughs> uh, this year. Wow, that's uh, that's hilarious. Um, let's just quickly spring through here. If anyone sticks out, um, no, they, oh god, they want to trade Thatcher Demko. Okay. Um, Trade alert. Kublik and Dahan to Arizona for a second and a pros vetsov. Um, go back here. Hey, it brings you all the way back to the beginning. And there's a trade coming through. Yeah, I don't think we need to make any trades. I think we're good. Yeah. Um, if I go back here. Fine trade. Yeah, I don't think we're looking to trading anybody here yet. I think we're 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 good with our with our team here. We're gonna let our the growth happen, um, and we'll see what happens after. Yeah, I think Marcus Patterson is probably the only guy that we could trade because we're not using him. So let's find a trade for Patterson. Um, let's see, fine trade. What could we get for Marcus Patterson right now? We got 13 offers with third and Tyler Pitlick, uh, Larson and a fourth, a second and a fifth from the Bruins, third and a fourth, third and Shaw, Vetrano and a six, Ashton Reese in the third, a second and a fifth from uh, Nashville, third and a fourth from the Islanders, second and a fifth from the Flyers, two thirds, two thirds. I like that from St. Louis. You know, I'm going to go with the two-thirds from St. Louis. Two-thirds for Pedersen? Why not? Accept that trade. All right. So, we got rid of Marcus Pedersen. Don't think there's anyone else we're looking to get rid of here. Yep. Yeah. And Phillips, because he's not really going to play. You know what? Let's just keep him anyways. You never know. Um, yeah. I think we're, we're good to exit trade deadline day. So, not, I mean, not a really exciting one, but uh, I think that's okay for what we've done with this team. And, again, I don't want to really wreck anything too much because of what we've done i mean 38 20 was it four is a pretty good uh, year up to the deadline so let's just finish off the year and see where we finish we're most likely hopefully going to make the playoffs here uh chris mcelaney absolutely not so let's just sim up to the end of the year here i won't do fast forward mode i'll just 
go right up to oh no 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 okay well we're gonna go up to the day before the last game <laughs> uh let's see just see how we do here i i imagine we'll we'll finish off pretty strong here already off to a good start but uh yeah we'll see how uh how are our guys do? I want to see who we match up with in the playoffs. It looks like we're going to be... Oh, God. I mean, we, I mean, we have potential to take first. We're right behind Anaheim here. There's another win. Ooh, the Ducks keep winning, though. So, uh, uh, it might be a tight race between us and the Ducks for first. It's going to keep going from the central scouting here. Shootout lost. Ottawa Senators. Shootout lost. Yeah, we're now four points back. Got to get some Ws here. There's one. Come on, there's Anaheim, big game. Ooh, we lose 6-2. Yikes, that was a big game for us. And uh, yikes, Anaheim getting it done over a 6-2. We're coming back with some wins here. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a tight race. Tight race, look at this. Oh, but they keep winning. Oh, big loss. Yeah, it's going to do it. I don't think we're going to get first place. Yep, and there's no way we can get first. That's okay, though. Uh, let's just see what our final record is. Can we be Arizona? We do in 52, 24, and 6. What a year for the Seattle Kraken. 110 points. Finishing second in a division. Look at that. Ryan Strom with 70 points for us to finish off the year. Our number one center getting it done. Perlini with 58 points and 27 goals. Uh, pretty good sniper year. Not getting any growth, though, man. That's, that's, that's sad to see. Um, oh, let me sort by forwards here. Hosang with 57 points, though. Again, no growth out of him. These guys just had 50-point years, and there's no growth. Uh, Giryanov with 48 points. Greenway with 47. Erasmussen with 44. Uh, Stanika with 41. Athanasio Krebs with only 29. Uh, so, you, you know what? Not too bad. Not too bad of player stats. Shea finishing off with 58 points, and Sergachev with 48 uh, basically, our top two defensemen on the team, Dermot with 36, Honka with 25, Petrie 20, and Johansson with uh, 18 points. UC Saros having a, another stellar year, 19, 919 save percentage, 245 goals against average with 42 wins. And Montebal doing it not too bad but be between the pipes as a backup. Uh, let's quickly look at our AHL squad. Wow, Jeremy Waugh actually finishes off. The year with 56 points. I hope he gets a big growth uh, throughout the offseason. Uh, Zykov, Kufner, Seneshin, 45 points. Hopefully he gets, grows. This is our one rookie, uh, Tuparainen. Might need to move on from Tuparainen. Not sure how he's going to fit in our, on our new team. We'll see. Again, we'll wait till he grows to an NHL level. Then we can assess him there. Uh, Goalie-wise, let's see how Gustafson finished off. Okay, so he came back stronger. 915 save percentage, 32 and 23. Uh, still at 80 overall. But at least he came back uh, strong from that other record we seen him with. So they didn't have a, a, a bad year either. Fin they actually finished uh, the Monarchs. The, uh, I forget what our, their first name is. Uh, finishing off with 95 points and making the playoffs. So both our AHL and NHL team making the playoffs here. So let's just sim a few days ahead and see who we're going to face in the first round here. And we will face the Edmonton Oilers in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. So we'll get through that in the next video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button. Leave me your comments down below. And I'll see you guys right back here for the NHL GM Mode commentary series with the Seattle Kraken. And right here on the Armchair GM's Sports Network.